we all have different cultural backgrounds, different religious backgrounds, different ethnic backgrounds. Um, and that's how we learn from one another, from our different life experiences. So this session, I'd like you all to speak, right? So we're looking at wakes or nine nights as one of the Caribbean cultural forms. Remember, I would have told you that um, even though there's a list of cultural forms from the different islands on the syllabus, in 2021, um, the ones that are being examined are carnival, wakes, slash nine nights, and land ship. So those are the three we're going to be focusing on, but we have to learn about a whole range of them because the whole point is that, um, is that we are learning to how we can incorporate them in theater and how they have been incorporated in theater as well. Great, let's get started. So as I said, we're going to look at the physical elements, symbolic elements, the relationship to theater. So how, again, as I said, how wakes are um, represented in plays and how they can be used, what they symbolize, what we might take from them um, and make from them, the impact on community, society, and the individual, and then traditional versus contemporary. So at every point, every step along the way, I'd like us to be taking notes. You need to have a really good, um, foundation and notes so that when you're ready to revise when an exam time comes around you're not googling it for the first time or saying mess i don't remember doing that right so mics on please um anybody pitching any through at this point i want to type anything that you know about we Usually, friends and family will speak and give a testimony about the person that passed away. Oopsie. That's what's good. That's good. Yeah. So we are ready. You sing. The people who, are, who participate, the people who are present, right? Will be friends and family who sleep. Um, anybody here is Baptist, Lucia, or? Yeah, well, not a Baptist, but my whole family is, and uh, when people die, they usually have like a whole drum session, right. and they play a lot of music and dance and just drink alcohol for some reason, or they just pray very intensely in a circle. I don't know why. I'm not sure specifically which still about alcohol, drumming, oops, drumming. Orisha, you said, right? Oh, oh is it um Ria, what's really Xmas? Ria, I think what what um what religion is that? I said Baptist, well, it's spirit. That next evil one. I don't know which one is that, but I can't remember which one. All right. The other one. Not evil, but um, like we will we'll get to it. Anybody else, Um, your different experiences of weeks? Anybody tell me why it's called a week in the first place? Or why we think it might be called a week. I don't think we call people. JL, I haven't heard you for the morning. Miss, um, before you, before I answer, I tried to answer the other one. I was going to say that um, they usually hold it on days or nights leading up to the um, to the funeral, yeah. and on the day of the funeral. Good. And on the you know, and that could that could vary, right? Depending on on who you're dealing with, on 
when the burial or the cremation takes place. Very good. Thank you, JL. Um, Sita, do you want to tell us anything you know about weeks or your experience with weeks? Um, well, most of the people that I do but but um some of, some of my family I'm not hearing you sorry about that um do I need to speak louder or yes and maybe come a, a little bit closer to your mic if you are coming deeper okay miss so for a lot of weeks um I well the people in my family play cards and well the ones who are cards pray the rosary and well, yes there's also a lot of alcohol but there's a lot of singing of like hymns and stuff good right and they will sing um okay let's put catholic at the beginning here. um in the rosary and then singing you know, and there's the light candles as well. Good, thank you very much. Let me make this smaller. Anybody else who has a very different experience of wakes has never been to a wake? Um, anything else that you want to that you're not seeing here that you think is very central to the experience of a week anybody when i go to wake we sing and dance what kind of dance Ooh, um well anything they dance while we're praying so i would be praying and i i wouldn't be dancing with them i wouldn't be able to see them dance okay sometimes people would dance can I ask what um what religious background, if any? Um, Catholic. Okay. Is it Catholic up here? I've I've only been to one week in my life, so I don't know if that's traditional, or if that's just how they did it, like the choice. Thank you, thank you, Lara. Um, anybody else? Anything to me? I haven't heard from you for the morning. To me, or anything that um, you know, about wakes or nine nights that um, you want to contribute, we can talk about what, what they eat because we know for Caribbean people, food is a very central part of our um, you know community. Miss every wake that I've gone to, we always eat pilau, so that's like a food tradition for us. I've never heard that one as a week convention, but that's very interesting. Um, anything else? Miss them people who usually eat like bread and cheese bits and drink coffee. That's what I, I thought that was a normal thing. <laughs> I, I know it's um oopsie. You all know the you all know the deal. It's going to end in 10 minutes. We just come back using the same link. I think Lara wouldn't know, but you just use the same link and the same password and you come right back into the room once this session is done, right? I know cheese paste sandwich and coffee. Um, yes. Yeah. The first okay. week I went to, they had roti. Well, I feel like pale. I want roti. Uh, two foods that turned out and just we put it in anyway. Any celebration, any gathering, roti or pale. Roti and or pale. The cheese paste is a common thing. Yeah. They even have that at funerals. I think the cheese pieces are common thing. Now, let's look a kind of strain off here, but I find this interesting. So we see that everybody has a different experience, but we all have some similarities in between there um, with weeks. So the differences would probably come um, due to people's personal convictions, due to your, your, your religious background and things like that. But I want to specifically look at coffee why why do we think coffee would be a, a common thing at a week 
or something that's you know a convention more or less yes they're probably trying to stay up the whole night good yeah i think the idea of it i think that's it um which we'll talk about in a little while but originally they literally used to stay up all night um for weeks so the coffee would be something that would uh, you know help them to stay alert um now the cheese paste sandwiches pilau roti yeah we accept that those are just you know i guess now like almost our national dishes and it's also things that are very easy to share um because if you think about pilau you make a big pot of pilau at a time and roti is the easiest thing to share you all know that's how roti well that's how we came up with not came up with but that's how bus up shot originated right when um when oh dear you see everybody who have flow internet they have money for all you you only need to switch to digital or something because digital doesn't doesn't falter with me at all and i've been having digital for a long time anyway um yeah so bus up shot when um we had indentured laborers coming across on the Fatal Raza to Trinidad. They are um, obviously on a boat for a few weeks at a time. Sometimes we didn't have planes. Um, so roti, of course, is an Indian food. That's not a Trini thing. But what they used to do, they'll have a big tower that they would have on the deck. Um, you'll probably know this already, that they'd have on the deck of the boat. And in a roti is like a nan is like a personal thing. You is like a saddle roti, so everybody would have their own personal size. But instead, because they had to share it up, they basically had to ration it among so many people and so many different families. They took the dabbler and broke it up, and that's how you end up. So they have the big one big roti, and then they break it up into pieces so that it's easier to share. It's more to go around basically with the same amount of flour. So that's how we ended up with bus up shot. At least that's one of the theories of how we ended up with bus up shot. So we're looking at foods that are very easy to share, um, being incorporated into weight. But the cheese paste sandwich, I want to look at particularly. Why do we think cheese paste sandwiches are so common, considering the um, any ideas? There's literally no wrong answer. We can speculate, but yeah, it's cheap. It is because um, in a lot of circumstances, again, something that's easy to share. And in a lot of circumstances, it's um, people of lower social standing who are going to have many, 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 many people to feed at a week. So you're going to look for the cheapest, easiest thing to make. I mean, cheese is expensive. And that's one thing you learn when you become an adult. Cheese is very expensive, actually. But... Um, I think back then, like back in the days, they probably used to have market cheese, but people probably used to make cheese. You don't know about market cheese, the cheese that don't go in the fridge and it'd be nice and so often. But yes, um, so a lot of these things are symbolic of the people who are celebrating, and, well, commemorating, um, and why they are commemorating. Now, I, I, a few of you mentioned alcohol, but why? Why do we think alcohol might be so common? Honest answers are welcome, but why do we think alcohol might be so common in um, in weeks? Maybe to honor the dad. Sorry, say again. Maybe to honor the dad. That is part of it. There is a um a kind of spiritual thing about the spirits, yeah. That is part of it. Um, there's another reason that I'm speculating. It really just popped into my head. I don't know if anybody else is thinking it, but if when we get to it later, I'll come. To forget your worries. Yeah, I'm thinking that. I mean, and I thought um, I thought that the heavy alcoholism was a uniquely Caribbean thing because it really is not a. It's a universal thing. It's a worldwide thing. And um, for the three years that I lived in England, I realized that they are heavier and worse drinkers than Caribbean people could ever dream to be. And they are from a very young age. So when people tell you that, you know, alcoholism and drinking or whatever is a Trini thing or is an Indian thing or is a this thing or whatever, 
it's a universal thing. But and it's because human beings always want to want to escape. They want to, you know. So you're probably dealing with it, or maybe you're not, because there's always going to be people in a way who don't even know the person, probably maybe met them once or twice. But people like that idea of you know escaping. So you don't have to think about this death anymore. You don't have to feel your feels at a particular point in time. But that's just something I am. You all could write all of that down, write down your thoughts, share your thoughts and all that. But let me get started with my actual thingy. Why does it keep going back here? Great. So that was our little contribution to what we know about weight. Now let's go and see what the people say about weight. Oh, as we're talking here, what are the, um, what would we say are the cultural roots then? Where, what, where do weights originate? What cultures, as in what ethnicities, what background uh, would you all say it comes from? Probably Catholicism. So Christianity definitely would be one of um, or part. Anybody else? Any ideas? And when we're talking about weight, anyway, I'll get into that. But um, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um Miss, I think it's traditionally Africa because we learned in history that African people had wigs and they used to do the, they used to dance the bongwa thing. Was mm -hmm. it? Yes, bongwa. Dance. And they used to um, have songs and stuff specifically to honor people when they died and music and drum rhythms and stuff like that. You're very right. You're very right. Because remember, one of the things we spoke about here is drumming. Um... So it is a mixture because if you think about it, spiritual Baptists and things like that are Christian mixed in syncretized, which you might learn about in history in Pompeii, but I can't remember, um, with African. Now remember this, this call is going to end in less than a minute. Just come straight back. I only am a third slide and class nearly done, but that's fine. Um, but when I'm talking about wigs, it's something that's practiced all over the world, but we are talking about it specifically in a Caribbean context. And most of our cultural forms will have roots that are either African, um, European, Indian, um, in, well, European covers French, um, Spanish, British, all of that um, in one. But particularly in wigs, we're looking at a Christian European background and an African background as well in a Caribbean context. So let's um, write that down. The class is going to end and then you'll come straight back. Right. This minute is last long boy. And then when we're looking at nine nights, which I'll go into in a second, um, that's one that we might write. So just for the sake of, you know, um, formality. A wake is a gathering that takes place on the occasion of a person's death, um, where people mourn the loss of the person on the nights leading up to their funeral. Now, another thing that we should take note of is that it's not always, it doesn't always end on the night of the funeral. Some, it's not as common, but there are some people who, who carry on the wakes for the full 40 days. You'll know you'll have wakes and then you have 40 days. So you have the 40 days commemoration of when the person dies. Um, a long time ago, and some, I guess some people still do it, they will have wakes every single night for those 40, first 40 days um, after the person dies. So the time really just depends. A lot of these things really just depend on the particular um, circumstance. Um, of yes. the yeah? That 40 days thing is different in different cultures because like here it's 40 days but in like Korea it's 49 days. 49? Yeah. Yeah, the 40 days thing is definitely a, 
It's like that is a Christian thing for sure. That one definitely comes out of Christianity. Um, but yeah, so as we say, it's celebrated in many different ways all over the world. Um, but the ones we're looking at particularly, I guess, is in this hemisphere. But that's very interesting. 49 is a strange number. And then, of course, we can ask why, um, why 40? Why we choose that particular number of days and why Jamaicans choose nine nights? We'll talk about that in a second. But um, traditionally, actually, before they had um, embalmers and funeral homes, the body of the person used to stay in the house. And my mother told me stories about this as well, where they'd have the body stored um, on ice, basically. So when people are coming to the wake, they are actually there with the body. And I guess that is probably why they needed that community of support. Because it's a little bit different morning when you're, you know, the person is not there as they would be now. But um, when you're waking up and going to sleep every day with this person who was, you know, once alive and there to you and they are in your living room on ice, then I guess it's, it's, it's a different morning experience. So that's probably why they really needed all that community of people present to help the, um, the, the family. Somebody say something. That sounds kind of horrific. It does. It does sound very horrific. But um, a lot of uh, death traditions along, around the world do sound very horrific. Um, there's a place, I can't remember who, where it was in the world, but there's a place I know they um they basically dress up the person and act as though they're still alive for that point in time. There's some places where they don't bury them, they just leave them to it's yeah, it it, it is horrific. <laughs> but um and that there's another traditional thing called death water where, that people talk about and they say uh, if uh if you know, if, if things went bad in somebody's life, somebody probably gave them um, dead water to drink, which is basically, well, nowadays it's the water that they wash the body with in the funeral home. But back then, of course, if you're using ice to, um, to store the person, the ice must melt at some point in time. So when you empty out that water, people claim that the water could be used to do necromancy and phobia and people and stuff like that. But that's a different story. Um, and that's probably why they needed to stay up all night as well. They need to, needed to make sure that the person didn't wake up. I don't know. Um, and then in some countries, like St. Vincent and the Grenadines, it's called a setup. Um, and in some countries, it's not as common. So in Barbados, I don't think wakes are as common as they are in Trinidad and Jamaica. So that is that for what a wake is. So a wake or a setup. Um, but a nine night now, this one is specifically a Jamaican tradition. And the reason, and I guess from the, um, from the name, you could gather that it lasts for nine nights. Um, and this follows the West African belief. And we know it's West African, of course, because that is the part of Africa that um, we came from Caribbean people. People who are now Caribbean people would have been brought from the west of Africa. Um, and they believe that after a person dies, their soul would kind of roam the earth for a few days. And then on the ninth night, like at midnight, that is when the person would finally go to their final resting place. So the wake is supposed to be the ceremony to kind of guide the person along and make sure they do linger on earth, make sure they do get too comfortable and want to stay, make sure they find where they have to rest and um, all that jazz. So as we're talking about it being celebrated in different parts of the world, this painting um, is an old Afro-Puerto Afro Rican um, painting, a very traditional painting. Um, and it's, if you all, you know, pay attention to it closely. Um, it's a wake celebration for a baby or a young child. Um, and it was a festive 
environment because they thought that if a child if a child died um they died without sin and they would go straight to heaven so um the painting is kind of a critique of the tradition because i guess in the same way that we find it bizarre that people would have weeks with the person still in the house um this painter found it kind of bizarre that they would have these um celebrations on the death of a young child um so you see the place kind of in a mess you know it have a dog inside there flowers on the ground and the, this is the baby in a coffin right in the middle here um so this is just you know going to show and this is puerto rican this is from puerto rico um but it's a black puerto rican tradition and they call it we in spanish but um you know it just goes to show that is celebrated in different ways in different parts of the world and of course puerto rico is caribbean in a sense of the word even though they, they are american territory they're spanish as well so it, we don't connect with them as much but puerto rico is part of the caribbean so we see different ways it's celebrated right and traditionally for a long time this is a old painting i can't remember oh 1893 that's how old the painting is from 1893 that's a long time ago, right? So, as I said, I'm missing a word there, but I can't remember what it was. Caribbean something are influenced by both European and West African tradition. They are practiced, da, 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 da. So, as everything that we said already, what is the word that's missing there? I can't remember. Um, let me know if I'm going too fast, because remember, you all are supposed to be taking notes. So let's head up one time. We're going in with physical elements. I'm going to give you two minutes to, not two minutes, 10 seconds to write that up in your books. So we're looking at weeks and nine nights and the physical elements as outlined by the syllabus. We're not doing that bad for time, actually. So the first category on the physical elements would be people and roles. Um, and as we would have discussed, the primary function is to form a community of emotional support. So in a time of loss, in a time of grieving, and I think it's very interesting for us to think about that now in COVID times when we can't gather or we're not supposed to gather um, in times where funerals can't have more than 10 people at a point in time it was not more than five people how do people cope with um with grief and loss and and uh, mourning in a time when we cannot gather and especially now when we have that privilege taken away from us the privilege to gather we realize how much of our culture is based on coming together and based on this sense of community. So even things like carnival, mourning, you know, the, the loss of carnival or not being able to have carnival or the Independence Day parade and things like that. So it really puts into perspective how important it is for us as a people to gather and historically how important that was under circumstances like slavery and indentureship where, um, the only reason these people were brought together is because they were seen more or less as laborers. So how they cope with that experience on top of normal human experiences of loss, because you'd see that each and every one of us have experienced some loss of some sort. Each and every one of us has been to awake because it's a universal human experience, you know, death and loss and stuff like that. So the function, I guess you could say in a nutshell of the people in the wake is to provide emotional support to one another but particularly to the immediate family and we know sometimes every funeral is always be a bacchanal because it's have people who wasn't in the family before and now come and decide they want to whatever um anybody who's watched greenleaf i'm straight off topic here me yeah. i'm a show i'm a show i read what greenleaf these days but um yeah, when, 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 when people die on, on shows like that and you see the sister come back after 20 years and all that jazz, right? Being able to yeah. pay those respects. 
listen to me all, I am obsessed with green leaf. You all will hear me speaking about it quite often. So as we said, praying, singing, and telling stories. So the telling stories is not one that is as common nowadays, but actually, so you all know we have um, a Nancy stories, as in where somebody's saying something. Well, I was going to say that at my grandmother's week, they told stories. Oh, nice. I didn't. I, I, I'm sure some people still do it. But the traditional thing is that you would have the younger people um, listening to the elders tell stories. So it could be, in some cases, it is stories about the deceased person. But traditionally, that was how they carried on the oral tradition of telling them. Um, so for instance, stories about, Ana like traditional African stories or traditional Caribbean stories about Anansi, um, when I say Anansi, not necessarily Anansi, the spider in particular, but that vein of, you know, fables and stories like that. And I think that's a beautiful tradition that is a shame that it's lost. Um, but that was something that, and we constantly making this comparison and contrast between um, contemporary wakes and traditional wakes. Of course, we acknowledge that it's always going to be different. It's always going to depend on the individual family. But um, I think it was more common in traditional wakes for that storytelling um, tradition to happen where, you know, children would literally, and you see it in plays a lot, children literally gather around and listen to the one of the wise old people um, telling stories. So of course praying and singing. And of course praying is how is part of how we deal with grief and loss and um, you know coming to terms with it. Um, what, just about everything in life. And singing as well because you know what they have this good old Christian saying when you sing you pray twice. Um, right. Yes, so family and friends are normally in charge of planning. And I guess the function of that is that it will relieve the immediate relatives of the financial and emotional duty. Because if you think about it, you just lost somebody who's close to you. It might be, especially if it's a sudden loss or if it's a young person, this community is going to want to, um, want you to stress, I guess, as, as little as possible. You're already dealing with so much, so they will kind of take that burden away from you. They will relieve you of those um, duties, I suppose. So again, this community of support to kind of cushion the experience, at least for the first few days, of um, dealing with this person passing away. And then... In uh, religious situations, the master of ceremonies might be MC, might be a priest or a preacher or a religious person, um, or Mr. Mr. Philip, who's being weak, plenty and thing. Um, who most times the family will pick. They'll pick somebody in particular who they want to, who they think would be able to comfort the people there. Um, and so on. And it, it has have some bizarre things, like sometimes they'll choose the person who, who was the priest at the person's wedding when they got married or baptized them, and then they'll come and talk in the week or whatever the case might be. Um, and as we did, as we discussed, um, traditionally people would stay awake all night until the next morning, until the sunrise. Um, so the, the, one of the functions of the community there was to help keep each other alert, to help keep each other awake until um, the next day. So that's why I guess they would play games and stuff as well to help to, to keep each other entertained um, and alert to keep them engaged so that they wouldn't want to fall asleep. I, we could speculate why exactly they wanted to stay up all night. Um, I'm sure there are different beliefs behind it, but uh, I'll, I'll just the, the function of the people is um, just forming community and supporting each other and um, building up each other. 
we have four more minutes, so I don't want to go into the next slide and um, do too much talking. We're gonna, we have a lot of slides. <laughs> we are going to stop there today, but we'll continue it again next week. We're gonna stop recording.